where I'm going to give you your introdu our introduction and it's honoring old glory. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. <laughs> the flag of our nation means many different things to our veterans. To some, it represents the solemn oath they took to defend the country and its citizens when they entered the U.S. military ranks. It stands as a symbol of the freedoms and privileges we enjoy as Americans and the sacrifices that have been made to ensure others have a chance to pursue the same. To others, it is a poignant and sometimes painful reminder of those lost in battle, whether the flag be draped over a casket or carefully folded and placed in the arms of a loved one. Even for those who may see the flag as a mere fabric or thread, it is inter interoxably linked to the spirit of our country. The red, white, and blue reflection of all that our country is, was, and can be. We know many across the nation want to pay proper respect to the stars and stripes. The following guide will help ensure your flag is looking ship shape wherever and whenever you choose to fly. On display, the flag should be thrown at half mast on Memorial Day until noon and then raised. The flag should fly from sunrise to sunset and may be flown at night if properly illuminated. Fly the flag at half mast during times of national mourning. Whether the flag is hung vertically or horizontally, the union, the blue section, should always be to the upper left side. Reminders, bring the flag indoors if you're expecting inclement weather, unless you have an all-weather flag. The flag should never rest on the ground. The flag should be used as, never should be used as clothing. On single flight poles, the American flag should be on top, and no other flag should be larger. Storing and maintaining the flag. The flag should be kept dry and folded properly into a triangle with a union visible. When a flag becomes tattered, damaged, or otherwise worn out, it should be retired and properly disposed of. Basic color guard protocols. The color guard will announce, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the singing or playing of the national anthem followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. When the color guard brings the U.S. flag into the venue, whether you are seated in the audience or at the head of the table, stand and face the colors. In the U.S. military, individuals or units passing or being passed by uncased, unfurled colors render honors when outdoors. Individuals who are not part of any formation begin, begin the hand salute when the colors are six paces distance and hold the salute until they have passed six paces beyond the color. The color guard post guard, the color guard posts the colors and then the national anthem is played. Immediately place your hand over your heart if it wasn't already there and keep it there until the anthem is completed. If the Pledge of Allegiance is said after the anthem, keep your hand over your heart until completion. After the speaker, after which the speaker should give you permission to be seated. We're going to have an actual flag folding, and we're going to talk about the 13 turns and what each turn of the flag means. There's a, there's a symbolism of every one. The flag is placed on a closed casket, so the Union Blue Field is at the head and over the left shoulder. After task is, play is played, the flag is carefully folded into the symbolic tricornered shape. Properly proportioned flag will fold 13 times on the triangles, representing the 13 original colonies. The folded flag is embellished of the tri-cornered hat worn by the patriots of the American Revolution. When folded, no red or white stripes is to be evident, leaving only the blue field with stars. It is 
been presented as a keepsake to the next of kin or an appropriate family man. Remember. The flag pre the flag presentation protocol is as follows. Stand facing the flag, the recipient, and hold stand facing the flag recipient and hold the folded flag waist high with the straight edge facing the recipient or the next weekend. Lean toward the flag recipient and solemnly present the flag to the recipient. Effective April 17, 2012, the Department of Defense standardized the flag presentation verbiage for military funeral honor ceremonies. The following verbiage will be used when presenting the American flag during the funeral service. They will say, on the behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, Marine, Navy, or Air Force, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbolic, as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. The United States Coast Guard is invited to use the same verbiage. Flag folding. As in Army and Navy custom, the flag is lowered daily at the last note of retreat. Special care should be taken that no part of the flag touches the ground. The flag is then carefully folded into the shape of a tricorner hat, emblematic of the hats worn by the colonial soldiers during the War of Independence. In the folding, the red and white stripes are finally wrapped into the wood as the light of day vanishes into the darkness of night. This custom of special folding is reserved for the United States flag alone. Honor the flag on special days like Memorial Day or Veterans Day and is sometimes used at retirement ceremonies. Here is the typical sequence of the reading. All right, the first, uh, oh, wait, okay, we're gonna get the, the up sign, wait until the first flag is ready. The first fold of our flag is the symbol of life. The second fold is the symbol of our belief in the eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of his life for the defense of our country to attain a peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. For as American citizens, trusting in God, it is to him who turn in times of peace as well in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country for the words of Stephen Decatur. Our country is our country and dealing with other countries. May she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether to be found with or without the within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth 
full is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day and to honor mother who it, for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold in the eyes of the Hebrew citizen represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold in the eyes of a Christian citizen represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When the flag is completely folded, the stars remind us of our national motto, and God we trust. The thirteenth fold, after the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on an appearance of the cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, reserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. Thank you for your attendance.